Yo, yo, it's your boy Jay Best and your boy Tyrell. Welcome back to the Straight to the Point podcast, season three, episode 19. So real quick, me and Jerick shot episode 19 on Wednesday night. Tried to post it yesterday. We have technical difficulties, all right? So we're just going to scratch that episode. This is episode 19, all right? Like I said, it's your boy Jay Best and your boy Tyrell, who is officially a part of uh, Saturday's episode. We do our bets and our picks, all right? So welcome to the fam officially, right? You was off and on, but now you are officially in, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blessed. All right. And then, as always, we want to thank God for waking us up this morning, allowing us to talk about sports, which is something that we love to do. And without him, we wouldn't be here right now. So let's go ahead and let's get straight to the point. And let's start this thing off with the Steelers and the Browns. All right. So earlier this week, before I say anything, I texted you and I said that I was a little, I was feeling a little funky about this game, right? Let's just clarify that. I said that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, just making sure so people think I'm lying or nothing like that. I felt funky about this game, all right? We had one four straight, and it's just something about Browns games. I don't like it. Like, next week, I feel way more confident against the Bengals, and I felt more confident against the Ravens than I do against the Browns. It's weird, but being a Steelers fan, I just know that against the Browns and against teams of that caliber, we don't show up sometimes, and that's what happened. But I don't want to talk about the game. I want to talk about one aspect of the game. All right, there was a questionable flag in the fourth quarter coming out to the end of it where Jameis Winston was getting sacked, and this was on second down, and he threw the ball to the line of scrimmage, right? There was no receiver in that area, which means it's an intentional grounding. Intentional grounding, you lose 10 yards, and you, it's a loss of a down. So we're looking at fourth and 12. It was second and two, so it should have been fourth and 12 the very next play. But because the offensive lineman for the Cleveland Browns touched the ball, right, they scratched the intentional grounding penalty and said illegal touching against number 55, whatever number it was, was changing from a 10-yard penalty to a 5-yard penalty, and it became 3rd and 7 versus 4th and 12. Um, I don't understand this call at all, and I was losing my mind when they changed the call because you're trying to tell me there's a way for you to prevent a call from happening? and get a lesser version of that call if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Browns basically bailed themselves out, which should not be allowed. So what's your um, comment on what happened? Yeah, so I feel the same exact way you feel. Um, I feel like with the game on the line, they were like the 30-yard line. You know, you move them back 10 yards in that game right there where it's 4th and 12, they can't kick it because that's a that's a 54-yard field goal. They can't with that kick weather, With that weather, too. And the chances are them going for it on fourth and 12 against y'all's defense is just so that's a game changing flag right there. And it ended up with them picking up the first down. I think it got to like fourth and short and then they picked it up. But yeah, like the game was changed throughout that flag. The terrible flag. Everybody knows that's intentional grounding. I've never heard, I've never in my life heard that, heard that before. There's nobody in the area. He threw it at the ground to the lineman. And yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, like I said, I don't understand it. And I would lose my mind. After it happened, I swear, I looked at my little brother and I said, we're about to lose this game because of that call. And it, it shouldn't have came down to that call. Like, I'm not giving, the, I'm not excusing the Steelers' performance yesterday. I think they came out very flat in the first half. In the second half, he picked it up. But he was already down seven, right? And then the weather conditions changed at halftime, right? It started snowing a lot. So now you're down seven and the weather's against you. So it's harder to put up points, harder to get on the field. We put ourselves in a bad situation, but that call changed everything, like you said, and I don't understand how that's even a rule where you can change a penalty. Like, you're in control of that, basically. I, I said, you know what, instead of getting a 10-yard penalty, I'm going to touch the ball. And it's going to turn into a five-yard penalty. That doesn't make sense. But we're going to move on from that, and we're going to do our next segment called Safe or Fire. So I'm going to give a list of coaches um, that we – we saw this list on Instagram. We're going to give you all a list of coaches, and me and Tyrell are going to tell you if we should fire – if the team should fire them or if they are safe, all right? So the first coach is going to be Zach Taylor. Tyrell, safe or fire? So, yeah, so I think he's safe, and this is the reason why. Um, I feel like Jamar Chase didn't have a full training camp with Joe Burrow. T. Higgins didn't have a full training camp with Joe Burrow. They didn't have a full training camp with Joe Burrow. So I just feel like, in general, they every single game they were in, it was a really, really close game. I think they just got to pull it together on the offensive side of the ball. Really everywhere, but I think he's safe. Yeah. I agree with you. I think he's safe as well. Um, I've been hard on this team this year because of the expectations that we had for them going into this year. 
right? And I just feel like they are not a good team, and it's because of that defense. And not only defense, but some games they found ways to lose. Like, for example, against the Ravens when they missed uh, they misheld this um, snap for the kick, right? They misheld the hold, and they missed the field goal. Um, against the Chargers at the end, the offense couldn't get out on the field. So it's a couple of games where it wasn't just the defense, but the defense is so bad that you got to either blame the GM or the defensive coordinator. The GM not putting enough talent over there or the defensive coordinator not drawing the right schemes. But Zach Taylor's in charge of the offense, and the offense looks really good this year. Joe Burrow's having arguably one of his best years, but they just can't get wins because the defense is so bad. Um, next, we got Matt Eberflus for the Bears. Fire or safe? Fired. He's out of there. He's obviously the reason why they're bad. I was watching the Bears play a couple games this year, and he's the one calling the plays, right? Like, every single mm-hmm. offensive play, he was the one calling the plays. He looked terrible with Justin Fields. He looks terrible with Caleb Williams. These are two superstar quarterbacks. They were superstar quarterbacks before they came into the league, and since he's been coaching them, they've looked terrible. So he's out of there. I, I think if I was the Bears, I wouldn't even make it to week 17. Let's get him out of here now. Yeah, I think one one reason why they're holding off on that is because they believe they still alive for the playoffs. And mathematically, they are, but I think they're going to miss it. And, yeah, he got to go. Look, you have too much talent on that offense. I understand Caleb Williams is a rookie, right? I completely understand that he's going to have his ups and his downs. But you've been here for a minute now. This is not your first year. You've been here. And what have you produced? You haven't produced nothing. I don't think a coach can keep getting years to not produce, right? Either you produce or you don't. And if you don't produce, then – we got to move on. So Matt Eberflus, before Caleb Williams got here, they didn't look too good, and now they definitely don't look good. So I think Matt got to go. And not only that, but just a, a new face, right, a new voice for that team that could really help them in the long run. Not only that, but bring in an offensive-minded, like a mastermind, somebody from the Sean McVay tree, somebody from the Kyle Shanahan tree to work with Caleb Williams because you already have the weapons, right? So the, the coaching hire for this team is going to mean a lot um, going into next year. All right, next we got my boy, Doug Peterson for Jacksonville, safe or fire? He's out of there. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people overlooked the Jaguars because they had a, a little good burst a couple years ago. Then they fell completely apart last year, which was on him. And I feel like we overhyped Trevor Lawrence, too. I feel like he's not that good either. But in reality, this team has just done nothing but get worse. He's came in, I think, had a seven and eight and eight season, then came in and just got progressively worse and hasn't made the playoffs the past two years. I think he should have got out of there last week. Yeah, especially after they lost to the um the Lions when they got smacked. They they definitely should have left. But um, yeah, who else are you gonna blame, right? You can't blame Trevor Lawrence, can't get rid of Trevor Lawrence, just paid him. So you can't blame him. So you gotta blame the head coach. And I think Doug Peterson is a good coach because we saw what he did in Philly. But and then we also saw him come to this team and revive this team. Right. Remember the first year Urban Meyer was here with Trevor Lawrence. He got fired midway through the season. And the next year they brought Doug Peterson in and he took the worst team to the playoffs. And then they went to the second round, lost to the Chiefs. So he's not a bad coach. It's just a bad situation right now. And like you said, that team, they have some talent. They do. Like, it's not, not just a bad team. They do have some talent, but he just has to be able to put the pieces together. And, hey, sometimes you're just not the man for that job. I think Doug will get another opportunity, I think, right, whether it's an offensive coordinator or a head coach. Um, but I think in this situation, he got to go. Because, like like I said, you hired – I mean, you um, signed Trevor Lawrence, gave him all that money, so you can't blame the quarterback. You got to blame the coach. All right, next let's go down to Dallas, and we're talking about Mike McCarthy, safe or fire? Fired. I think he's in the same boat as you just said. The Jaguars are in. You you can't blame anybody else. You can't get rid of Dak because you just gave him all that money. So I just think they just need a new voice, a new everything, a new system because they're really bad right now, and he's taking all the blame. Yeah, I this situation situation where I feel like his hands are tied behind his back because your GM is your owner, right? And I don't think Jerry Jones Jerry Jones is a great owner. Right. The Dallas Cowboys are the wealthiest organization in all the sports. But as a GM, he's not good. He he didn't he made no moves going into this season. So what you did was you gave Mike McCarthy a a team from last year that lost in the first round. So what do you expect him to do with it this year? Right. And it got a little bit worse because you lost Tony Pollard. 
right? So um, offensively, with no run game, what do you expect him to do? His hands tied behind his back in a situation where Dak Prescott going to be here for four more, or three more years, right? Jerry Jones is a GM not going nowhere. We're going to fire himself. That's not going to happen. So you got to go. It comes down to you. And I think it's unfortunate because he had, what, three straight 12-win seasons going into this year. But, hey, who else they going to blame? There's nobody else to blame but you. So, Mike, you got to go. Um, next, we got Brian Dable for the Giants. Safe or fired? He's fired, I think. Uh, every single year he's been in the league, he just hasn't really been really good. I, he's made the playoffs one time. It was one time. It was with the record of nine and eight with the seven seed. So it was really tough in that season. I don't know if you remember, but they were winning a lot of, a lot of close games. And last year they didn't win any close games. And then this year they're just getting blown out of games. So I think just like they're in the other boat, I feel like they just got a clean house completely. They let go of Daniel Jones. They just need to rebuild everything. New GM, new head coach, new QB. Yeah, this this team needs a rebuild because this is not a team that is a couple of pieces away. They're not, right? They're a lot of pieces away. So you need to rebuild. I blame the front office for signing Daniel Jones to that contract, just like I blame Dallas front office, right? But what you gonna do? You got you gotta blame the coach, right? And, and unfortunately, I don't think Brian Dable, I don't think Brian is a bad coach. I think he just has a bad team. He's never had a good team. Like to me, coaches, you either if you don't have a lot. I can't get mad at you for underperforming. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't think he's the problem, but you got to face it. You got to go to a rebuild because Daniel Jones, not the answer. You don't have the quarterback in your uh, organization right now. It's definitely not Tommy DeVito. And it's not going to be, um, who is it? Is it Drew Lock? Is Drew Lock over there? I want to say. I don't, even, I don't even know who their second QB is. I want to say, is it Drew Lock or Zach Wilson? It's one of the other. I want to no, Tommy DeVito is the second one. That's who got promoted because they just got rid of Daniel Jones. So it's one or the other for that other quarterback in that organization. And to me, the quarterback is not there. So you got to draft one. You got to rebuild because you're not close to being good. Drew Locke. Yes, sir. You was right. It, it's Drew Locke. Okay. So Drew Locke is not your answer. Tommy DeVito is not your answer. All right. So to me, you got to rebuild. And then if you're going to rebuild, you might as well get a new coach too. So Brian Dable, another guy I think that will get another coaching opportunity somewhere else, whether it's the OC, because he was the OC in Buffalo before he got this job, or – Maybe even a head coach somewhere because I don't think this is his fault. I think he's just been a bad team every year he's been there. All right, um, three more. We got Kevin Stefanski for the Cleveland Browns, safe or fire? I think he's safe. I think every year before this year, he's always had a really good team, always made the playoffs. I just feel like this year they simply just didn't have a quarterback. Deshaun Watson got hurt early, and before he got hurt, he wasn't wasn't playing good. The Browns have been hurt all season. They haven't had their tackles. Nick Chubb just came back off of one of the most devastating injuries in football. So I feel like he should get another chance. Yeah, I think um, the last three coaches we talked about, Mike McCarthy, Brian Dable, and Kevin Stefanski, I think I'm blaming all of their front offices. I'm not blaming them. I feel like they're not giving them enough. Like Kevin Stefanski has made the playoffs with this Browns team, right? But you went and you traded all your assets for Deshaun Watson and what did you get in return from Deshaun Watson? Since he got to Cleveland, he was not who y'all thought he was going to be. He was not Houston Deshaun. So that just sets your whole team back. And you lost draft picks with that trade. And you lost a lot of money because you gave him that fully guaranteed contract. Like, that's front office. That's not Kevin Stefanski's fault. So I think he should keep his job right now. He just beat the Steelers on Thursday Night Football with Jameis Winston. Like, who would have thought? You know what I'm saying? He beat the Ravens earlier this year with Jameis Winston. So I think he's a solid coach. I just think the front office didn't do him any favors by trading for Deshaun Watson. Understandably so. Like, I would have traded for Deshaun, too. I remember when we were talking about it during the Deshaun Watson um, negotiations. We both wanted Deshaun Watson to come to our team. But Deshaun did not turn out to be who we thought he was going to be um, in Cleveland. All right. So two more. We got Antonio Pierce for the Raiders. This is the first year head coach. Well, he was an interim last year. Then they gave him the job this year. Is he safe or fired? I think he's safe. I think he did, simply didn't have a really good team this year. And I think last year he put together some good wins. I think this year he'll still put together some good wins. But I just feel like he doesn't have a quarterback, doesn't have a running back, doesn't have a receiver. He doesn't have a, really anything besides edge rusher and corner right now. So I just feel like they have to get better in, in the front office and they got to get better on the field first. Yep, he doesn't have enough, starting with his quarterback. 
right? Y'all thought the right thing to do was to go and get Gardner Minshew this year. Like, Gardner Minshew is a bridge quarterback. To me, he's not bad, but he's not going to help you win games. He's a guy that you can plug and play. Like, for example, the Steelers could have gotten a Gardner Minshew and been good. Not great, but would have been good, right? Like, last year, Gardner Minshew with the Colts, he was not bad. So, to me, you win and you got a quarterback that – is not going to win you any game. So you did your team no favor by getting Gardner Minshew. And not only that, but Gardner Minshew needs to be on a good team. This Raiders team is not good. So that's just, that's just double negatives. And now your team is bad. So to me, you got to bring them back. You got to give them another chance. Let them try to fix this front office to start with you. Go and get a quarterback. You need a quarterback right now because your team is not close to winning. So get a quarterback that you can develop. Right, not only that, but he had to deal with Devontae Adams not wanting to be there earlier this year. So it's a lot of mess in Oakland, man. I mean, I mean uh, Vegas, sorry. And I think that Antonio Pierce is not to blame for that. All right, last but not least, Mike McDaniel for the Dolphins. Safe or fire? He's safe. And I say that because they were really injured this year. And I think whenever your quarterback's out of the lineup and whenever you're having different guys, like four or five multiple different guys throwing at your receivers, you're messing up the chemistry, you're messing up the timing, you're messing up everything. And I just feel like Tua missing seven weeks or however many weeks he missed, it messed up the timing and chemistry. So I just feel like he shouldn't be to blame because if you go and look at the stats, Miami's defense is really good this year, really good. The only place they liked was quarterback, and they haven't had their quarterback all season. So I feel like he should stay and get another chance, especially if he can make a run. Oh, yeah, if because they didn't got hot recently. So if he can't get to the playoffs, he's definitely safe. I think he's safe regardless, though, because I think that th this team's success will always be tied to Tua's health, right? So me personally, I didn't think they was going to be that good this year record-wise, and it was looking that way, and then Tua got hurt, and I was like, man, they're going to blame this season on Tua getting hurt versus saying this team is just not that good. And then paying Tua the way they did, I don't think they should have because – uh, you, you can pay Tua, but you don't got to break the bank with Tua. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the whole problem with the NFL today. Y'all think the next man up got to be the highest paid. That's not true. Let me lock you in for a couple of years. Let me pay you based on your performance. To me, Tua is not what – he's not worth what y'all paid him. So going into this year, I didn't think it was going to be that good. And then he gets hurt. So now that's an excuse. But they getting hot right now. So they do get in the playoffs. And he's definitely not going anywhere. So I think that his job security is always going to be tied to Tua's health. Tua get hurt. That's their excuse right there. That's your get out of jail free card, right? So uh, that is it for our safe and fire segment. Next, we're moving on to week 12 bets. And y'all, uh, in week 11, Tyrell went five for five. Five for five for bets. So, hey, look, I'm a little, I'm a little rusty right now. So y'all might want to look at Tyrell for his picks this week uh, for week 12. Uh, I'm going to start this thing off, though, and I'm going to give y'all a freebie. All right, Tyreek Hill, 0. 0.5. This is on prize picks. All right, this is a Thanksgiving bet because he plays next Thursday on Thanksgiving. So if y'all want to lock this in with any other picks that we have or where we're going to give y'all, hey, be my guest, right? 0. 0.5, he's going to get it. That's one catch, literally. All right, so easy money. Go ahead and lock in Tyreek Hill, 0. 0.5, Thanksgiving promo. Tyrell, you up. Yes, sir. So the first thing I have is the Buccaneers money line over the Giants. I think the Giants losing their quarterback, that's going to mix a whole bunch of things up. It's going to throw off the timing, throw off chemistry with that offense. So, and, I, and Mike Evans is coming back. So go ahead and lock the Buccaneers' money line over the Giants. All right, cool. That's um, his money line. Mine, I'm going with a spread. So basically, I think I, think I moved this spread, I want to say. Oh, no, I did it. It's Broncos minus six. That's what it is. It's Broncos minus six. I made this bet personally, and I moved it to like seven and a half. All right, the Broncos are playing the Raiders. All right, we just talked about this. The Raiders are not good, and I don't think Vegas is sold on Denver yet. I don't think Vegas think that the Broncos are that good. Because all you're saying is they're going to win by six points. They're going to win by more than six points. Did y'all see what they did to Atlanta last week? Blew them out, right? And the Raiders are worse than Atlanta. So this, to me, is a free bet, all right? Bet the minus six. And actually, I advise y'all to move it up to minus seven, maybe even minus eight. I see this being a multiple possession game, a double-digit game. All right, so this is easy money. Bo Nix is playing really good. We talked about it last week. Sean Payton has done a heck of a job with this team. Nobody thought they would be where they are right now. Nobody. Nobody thought Bo Nix would quickly become a good quarterback in this league. And this is his first year. So imagine how it's going to get when they add weapons to this team. All right, so to me, take the minus six against the Raiders. The Raiders are not a good team. The Broncos are. Take the minus six. How are you up? Yes, sir. 
Then I have Armand St. Brown, 0.5 receiving rushing touchdown. I saw a stat earlier this week. It said he has scored a touchdown in the last eight weeks, and I went and did my research on it. It's true. He's really, really hot. And if you know Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator, he draws up a lot of plays for everybody. He loves to see everybody eat. He's like, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. So Lions players, touchdown, player pops. All right, bet. Let me go with uh, Lad McConkey, Monday Night Football against the Ravens, over 70 and a half receiving yards. Now, I did this bet earlier this week, and I got 62 and a half, right? But it moved up. Since I did it, it moved up to 70 and a half, all right? So as long as it don't go above 75, I would still lock it in. Look, this Ravens secondary. They give up yards. Simple as that. Last week, I said, do George Pickens. He got past his prop. I told y'all about Cortland Sutton, what he did. Got past his prop. Cedric Tillman for the Browns, who barely had any yards against the Steelers on Thursday, got past his prop. All right, so number one receivers, number one options are eating against this Baltimore Ravens secondary. Take advantage. Take Lab McConkey at 70 and a half. Like I said, I got it at 62 and a half, but as long as it don't go past 75, I would still take it. All right, you up, Tyrell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the next thing I got is Nico Collins over 76.5 receiving yards. If you know, if you've been watching the Texans this year, then you know 12 is outside. Nico Collins has been going crazy every yeah. single game. And last week, he had an 80 yard screen to the crib, got called back. So I'm telling you, 76.5 receiving yards, smash that. All right, this one right here is my lock of the week. This is my, like, I'm 100% confident. This. Take that 0.5 bet, Tyreek Hill bet. Pair it with one of Tyrell's bets and pair it with this one, okay? Matthew Stafford over 247 and a half passing yards versus the Eagles, okay? With Puka and Cooper Cup healthy, okay? He has hit this line every single game. We're talking about at least 279 with Puka and Cooper Cup playing. This line is 247. The lowest he's had with them is 279. Take advantage of it and take this Matthew Stafford. I don't know why this line is low. I don't understand it. But the Eagles offense is going to score points against that Rams defense. The Rams defense is not that good, right? So the Eagles are going to be able to score points, which is going to make the Rams have to score points as well. They're going to make them throw the ball. So why not take this bet? This is an easy money lock, 247 and a half Matthew Stafford. You up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My next bet I have – is Chris Jones under 0.5 sacks. I don't know what's been going on with Chris Jones, but he's been getting really old lately. He's just been not been moving the same on defense. And on top of that, he's been getting a lot of double teams thrown at him. And if you go do your homework on it, he hasn't had a sack in the last five games. So Chris Jones under 0.5 sacks. Okay. And then my last one is going to be another one I'm very comfortable with. Uh, I'm comfortable with all of them, but you know what I'm saying? There's some you favor more than others. And this is another one. Josh Downs over 57 and a half receiving yards versus the Lions. Okay, the Lions are bottom six in passing yards allowed per game. But they are top five in the least amount of run, uh, rushing yards per game. So you can't run the ball against them, but you can definitely pass the ball. And now it's going to score points. Right, the offense is going to put up points, which means that Anthony Richardson and that offense got to push. They got to put the ball in the air to keep up with them. And Josh Downs has been that guy for this Colts offense. It was really with Joe Flacco at first because Anthony Richardson wasn't getting him the ball. But then when they put Joe Flacco in, Josh Downs started even more last week. Josh against the Jets defense. So I'm taking Josh Downs over 57 and a half versus the Lions. All right, you got one more? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My last one is... Dallas Goddard, over 46.5 receiving yards. I think Devontae Adams just got – Devontae Smith just got ruled out with a hamstring earlier today, and I feel like their only weapons is Dallas Goddard and A.J. Brown to really throw the ball to. So I feel like Dallas Goddard, Goddard easily over 46.5. Smash that. 100%. All right, so – like I said, y'all take our bets, man. Play them how you want them, but don't forget that .5 Tyreek Hill bet. Make sure you play that. Ty um, Tyrell went 5-5 five five last week, so ride the hot hand. But like I said, for me, Matthew Stafford for sure. If you don't take none of my picks, please take Matthew Stafford. All right? Uh, next, we're going to do our Week 12 picks. Uh, for me, I'm really good this year with my picks. I don't have the record up right now. Bless you, bless you. I don't <laughs> I don't have the record up right now. Once again, I'm having technical difficulties over here, but um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our picks for this week. Um, 
I picked the Steelers on Thursday. Even though I told Tyrell, I told my boy Caleb too. That's two people with credibility that knows that I texted them. That I was funky. I felt funky about that game, but I still picked the Steelers to win it. A little favoritism right there, but let's go on to Sunday. Okay, first we got the Chiefs and the Panthers. Tyrell, who you got? Yeah, so yeah, so so I got the Chiefs winning easily. I feel like the Panther. I mean, the Chiefs are pissed off by what happened last week, and they won't be losing again. So take the spread, really. Yeah, you can take the spread, probably even. Actually, I don't know because the Chiefs don't really. They don't blow out teams, but they also haven't played a team this bad yet. So, so this could be the time that it happens. So take take the Chiefs for sure uh, with the spread. Yes, I think like 10 and a half, some, somewhere around there. So you can take the spread, but I think you should go with Chiefs over the Panthers. All right. Next, we got the Vikings and the Bears. Who you got? I got the Vikings winning. Like we were talking about earlier, Matt Eberflus doesn't have that Chicago Bears team in pack. And I think Caleb Williams, the way he's been running the offense, I feel like he, I feel like he won't be able to really do too much on this Vikings defense. So I feel like. Vikings, you could take the spread if you want to, because I feel like it's, they won't be able to score on that defense. Well, I'm about to shock the world. I'm going with the Bears, okay? I'm going to look. Sometimes you got to pick upsets sometimes, all right? When I do my little pick and lead, I got to pick upsets. But I think the Vikings, they're showing us that they're not as good as people thought they were early because of the close wins that they've had lately. They're not looking too good, but it's disguised because they're winning games. Right, when teams are winning games, now you ignore the flaws. But Sam Darnold has not looked that good as of late. And we're talking about against the Jaguars, against the Colts, against these um, 500 and below teams. He's not looking that good. So I think that the Bears' defense has looked really good lately. And actually, last week, the Bears didn't look that bad. They lost because of a blocked field goal against the Packers, who was a really good team. So I think that they can actually get the upset. This is a divisional matchup. Divisional matchup, the Steelers just found out on Thursday night. Divisional matchups are not freebies. Right, so I think that this can be a tough game for the Vikings, and I'm gonna go out on the limb and I'm gonna pick the Bears to get the upset at home. All right, next we got the Titans and the Texans. Who you got? I got the Texans winning. I feel like if they're gonna be a dominant team in the AFC, they can't lose games like this. And they really didn't look too good last week against Dallas. Dallas just looked really, really bad. So I feel like in order for them to prove they're a contending team, they can't lose to a team like this. Yeah, they I got Texans too. I think they're going to win, but not by a lot. Because, I, because like you said, they've been struggling as of late to to kind of insert their dominance on bad teams. Like you said, with the Dallas Cowboys, that game didn't really get out of hand until the fumble for a touchdown that the Texans recovered and scored, right? So, to me, I think this will be a close game, but I got the Texans winning uh, for sure. All right, next we got the Lions and the Colts. Who you got? I got the Lions winning. I think the Lions are the best team in football right now. So, I, th- I got the Lions beating them, take the spread. Yeah, I got the Lions too. I think it's just a, it's just an overwhelming favorite, right? I think this is a really, really good team against a team that's not bad. The Colts aren't bad to me, but I don't think they're good enough to put up a fight with the Lions. So I got the Lions winning this game on the road in Indianapolis. All right, next we got the Patriots and the Dolphins. Who you got? I got the Dolphins. I'm gonna ride the hot hand. They've been playing really good the past two weeks. I think they're just like. They're just like every other team that's on their edge right now. They can't lose games like this if they want to get in the playoffs and assert their dominance. 100%. They got six losses already. They cannot afford another loss. So I'm going with the Dolphins to win this game. I think – I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't I don't think so. But I think that we saw what Puka Nakua and what Cooper Cup did to that defense last week. So I think Tyreek Hill, this might be one of them games where he go for over 100. It might be one of them games. So I'm going to go with uh, the Dolphins to win this game against the Patriots. All right, next we got the Buccaneers and the Giants. Who you got? I got the Buccaneers winning. Like I said earlier, Mike Evans is coming back this week. The Giants are playing with their second-string quarterback, so they're all out of sorts. And I just feel like Tommy, Tommy DeVito is not that guy. And I feel like it's going to show on Sunday. So take the Buccaneers, take the spread, too. Yeah, I'm taking the Buccaneers. I – I would never bet on the Giants to win a game. I just won't. That's just how bad the team is, right? This is why earlier I said Brian Dayball should not be fired. But unfortunately, he might get fired um, because this team is just not good. It's it's not. It starts with the quarterback. You had Daniel Jones, who to me is better than Tommy DeVito. So now you got Tommy DeVito in there. Now you're worse than what you were with Daniel Jones. So it's an easy win for the Buccaneers. All right, next you got the Cowboys and the Commanders. Who you got? 
I got the Commanders winning. I think the Commanders coming off a, a real bad loss last week. I feel like in order to prove they're a dominant team, they have to win games like this too. And I feel like Dallas looked so bad last week. I just can't see them winning again. Yeah, one hundred percent. A little little advice to Dallas: Don't play Cooper Rush no more. Play Trey Lance, right? Play play Trey Lance. First of all, I mean, my my theory behind this when I was talking to my uh, talking to Jared on that show that we did, but we did upload it, that you want to play Trey Lance because he's the only person that really has a chance to start in the NFL outside of Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush and Trey Lance, who has a better chance to start in the NFL? It's going to be Trey Lance. All right, Cooper yeah. Rush will never start. So I feel like you should start Trey Lance, but. Even if he plays good, you're not gonna start him next year because that person got a contract. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's it's just a bad situation and all. But I would still play Trey Lance, and I'm going with the Commanders in this game. Like you said, the Cowboys, they're done, and I think they know the season's over, so they definitely not gonna play um, in this game against the Commanders. All right, next we got the Broncos and the Raiders. Who you got? I got the Broncos winning this game, and I got the Broncos winning this game because they killed Atlanta last week, and I think that defense is legit. I it's, it will be really hard for me to see Garner Minshew putting up more than 10 points on that defense because that defense is that good. That defense is really good. And I got them winning this game. I don't know why the spread is so low, like minus six. I don't get it. I think they're going to blow out the Raiders in Vegas, right? It's a controlled environment. It's in a dome. So we ain't worried about weather. Ain't worried about, it's, it's best on best, right? And the Broncos are clearly the best team in this matchup. So I got the Broncos over the Raiders. Uh, next, we got the 49ers and the Packers. This is a must-win game for the 49ers. Like, if they want any chance of making a run, this is a must-win game. Who you got? So, I'm going upset alert this week. And I got the 49ers winning, even though Brock Purdy and Nick Bosa were ruled out earlier today. And George Kittle is a game-time decision. I still think CMC is going to get in his groove today. I mean, this week, I think Debo is going to get in his groove this week. And I think Jennings is going to continue to be dominant. And even though... Nick Bosch is not playing on that defense. I still feel like that defense has a lot of good pieces and a lot of good players. So I think they could get it done. Yeah, I'm not 100% saying the Packers going to win this game. I can see the 49ers winning, but I, I'm just scared to pick a team that doesn't have a starting quarterback, for one, and a team that doesn't have the best player on the defense. I mean, you can argue – Fred, right? But I think Nick Bosa is the driving force because we know how important pass rushes are in today's game. So I think he is the most important piece on that defense. And he's not playing. We saw them without the, Nick Bosa at the end of that game. And we saw the Seahawks move the ball. I think the Packers are better than the Seahawks. And they can move the ball better than the Seahawks. So I'm going to go with the Packers in this game. Um, like I said, must win for the 49ers. But I think the Packers are going to take care of them. All right, next we got the Cardinals and the Seahawks. This is a huge divisional matchup. Y'all know you know how close some records are. Okay, the Seahawks are five and five. The Cardinals are six and four. The Rams five and five, and the um, 49ers five and five. Everybody five and five except for the Cardinals. All right, so who you got in this divisional matchup? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is gonna sound crazy, especially coming from my mouth because I was never a big Kyler Murray fan. But this, the Cardinals look really, really, really good this year. Like, they look crazy good, and I think Kyler Murray is a big part of that. Every time he's in the pocket, he's he's making his reason. He's letting it rip, and if it's not there, he's taking off. And I think that offense, the way he got it, it rolling, he, they're either driving down the field and getting three or they're getting seven, and then their defense is getting stops when they need to get stops. The Cardinals aren't – they don't have a good defense, but their defense gets stops when they need to get stops, and that's really big in today's NFL. I got the Cardinals winning. Yep, you agree this is a big game, right? Gigantic game. For the division, right? I'm not picking Geno Smith in big games. Okay, I'm not. I just – I can't. I, and I feel bad for Seahawks fans because I feel like they believe that they can really do something with Geno. I think they really think that. And what happened last week, I'm not I – don't, I don't care. Right? He had to walk off touchdown. I'm cool. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving you – I'm not giving you all that credit. I'm not going to boost you up for, for that. I think this is a, a week where he's going to wet the bed in a big game. So I'm going with the Cardinals uh, on the road in Seattle. Uh, sorry, Jason, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I just don't – I don't think Geno is, going, is like that. Uh, we got a big, huge matchup on Sunday night with the Eagles and the Rams. As you mentioned earlier, Devontae Smith is not playing in this game with a hamstring injury. So who you got, the Eagles and Rams? I got – I'm going to go upset alert again. I got the Rams winning this game. I, they're in LA. The Rams are real hot too. 
And that division, that division is a really good division. So they can't afford to lose. I think they're going to be motivated to play. Cooper, Cup, and Puka, they look really good together. Kyron Williams, like you talked about earlier, Matt Stafford is going to hit his passing yards, Mark. I think that offense is gelling together at the perfect time. And I think they're going to go beat that Eagles, that Eagles defense. And on top of that, they're going to test that Eagles secondary and see how good that secondary really is. And, and Quayon Mitchell has been good this year, especially for a rookie. Been really good. Corner for the Eagles. But they got two guys. They got two. So you can, I don't care if you lock down Puka. I still got Cooper. Right? I don't care if you lock down Cooper. I still got Puka. I think this is this was my NFC championship game, these two teams. I think they're both really good. And I think that Devontae Smith, I, I, I was leaning towards the Rams before Devontae was ruled out. But after Devontae got ruled out, I'm definitely taking the Rams now. So we're on the same page with this one. I think it's going to be a really big game. The Eagles have not lost a game in a long time. Right? They've been, they've been hot on a, a hot streak. And then the Rams, remember they dropped that game to the Dolphins, Monday Night Football. They cannot afford that. Right, so I think this is the game they're gonna win that can level out that loss. So I got the Rams winning a huge game on Sunday night football, and then we also got a big game on Monday night football with the Ravens and the Chargers. This is the Brother Bowl, the Hardbark Bowl, Hardbark Bowl. All right, so who you got, Ravens or Chargers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got the Ravens coming in and winning, and the reason I say that is because the Ravens lost a really tough game last week. To the Steelers, a, a divisional game, a game they usually lose, but we all know how Lamar Jackson gets after a loss. We all know how Tim Harbaugh gets after a loss. They get it right. They watch film until they get it right. And I think even though this is brotherly love, I still got the Ravens coming out and destroying the Chargers just because they're coming off a loss and there's going to be more tempted to play. Yes. So I learned my lesson. I think the Ravens lost. I can't remember who they lost to, but I think the very next week they played the Broncos and they killed them, murdered them. And I came out and I said, take the spread. I thought the Broncos would play it close. And no, they lost their Browns. Lost to the Browns. Then they played the Broncos. I said, take the plus. I think it was plus nine, something like that to take it. I think this will be close. And basically they stomped the Broncos. So I, I believe that theory that after losses, the Ravens really going to try and kill you because of what happened the week before. But the only thing that's different is I think Jim is a better coach than John. I think Jim is a better coach than John, so I'm going with the Chargers only because I think this is a this is a big matchup, not just for the AFC standings, right? But these are two brothers, right? This is this is huge, and Thanksgiving on Thursday too, so it's really gonna be uh, whoever wins gonna get the turkey, right? So I got I got Jim winning a big game, all right. I guess I got to pick a couple upsets, and this is an upset I'm comfortable with. I think the Chargers have found a passing game. One of the flaws of the Chargers were they can't pass the ball. Over the past couple of weeks, we've seen them start to throw the ball, get Lab McConkey involved, get Quentin Johnson, who we threw the towel in on last year. He's actually looked solid this year. And I'm going to say he looked great, but he looked solid this year. And Herbert can put the ball in the air. So I think that they won't be able to run the ball, but they can definitely throw the ball. And mind you, the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator from the Chargers came from the Ravens last year. So I think there's a lot of familiarity there. And I and I got the um, – I'm sorry, the offensive coordinator came from the Ravens a couple of years ago. Sorry. But familiar faces, I got the Chargers winning this upset. All right, but that is it for today's episode of Straight to the Point Podcast. Like I said, take them bets and take our picks and go win you some money. All right, the holiday season is here. Black Friday is next Friday. So y'all take advantage of our bets, man. Get you some money so y'all can go buy something you want. All right, but that's it from your boy Tyrell and your boy Jay Best. Much love. Stay blessed. We out. Thank you.